الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله تعالى وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين ما بعد so my boss subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our siyam and aqiyam inshallah in this holy month uh, so today's reflection starts with the question what's it like for our children What's Ramadan like for our children? <laughs> Don't try to answer that. <laughs> All right. So and the point really is from the youngest age, from the moment children went, you know, if, children, if, your, if our children are going to school, uh, if they're going to school, then, you know, they should have a, a strong awareness of Islamic dates, Islamic uh, you know, festivals, holidays, using all the all, using all modern terms, but you, you understand what I mean, right? Important days in the Islamic calendar. But of, co- of course, nothing is greater than Ramadan and our two Eids, okay? And it's important that while we practice these things, that we take our children uh, along with us, and that they also experience some of it in a, in a way that's appropriate to their age. I'm not saying that we make the five-year-old fast until he drops. Um, but what I'm saying is that they should experience and they should feel as though they are part of it. But the Ramadan is something that's really important and it's special. Um, and the best way, I suppose one important thing, and perhaps the one that I'm concerned is lacking the most, is, is talking. Right? Talking to children about what's important about Ramadan, what's significant about Ramadan. And there are, there's some things in there that are really fascinating for children. Right, The idea of doors of mercy the other, right and, and doors of uh, punishment and shayateen being locked up is is really f- amazing fascinating stuff and children don't forget these things right um and it's important that we share these things with them um so that they have some idea of of what is happening and they look forward to it and when the time is right they're on your case you know you, uh, by the, when your children are hitting seven years of age they should be fighting you to let to let them fast, right? And you should be saying, no, 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 you're not old enough yet. Okay, fine, you can fast a quarter fast or a half fast. But by this point, they know that you're playing games with them. And they know that the fast is the whole day, but you're trying to like cut it back. And that you know, and you're like you're saying, no, 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 you're not old enough. You know, we want to make sure that you can cope with it. We don't need to become weak. So okay, a quarter of the day, then a half of the day, then a full day. But th- this 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 kind of you know, th- th- this, situ- th- this situation is, needs to be created. And to do that, you have to build Ramadan up, Eid up, you know, uh, Qurbani, Hajj, Umrah. You have to, we have to build these things up, even Salah, daily five times Salah. You have to build it up so that it's something that, you know, it's something that is some, it's a rite of passage. Right? When, you know, when your time comes, you're going to pray, and you're going to go to the masjid. And it's, it's, you know, it's your rite of passage, it's your journey to adulthood, it's your journey to maturity. Now you're, you're, a, you know, you're, a, you're, you're a man, you're a woman, you're, you're, be, you're becoming an adult because you're reaching, you're reaching an age whereby you're accountable. Make a big deal out of the age of accountability and so on. Um, and make, that, of, make all of that positive. Right? Make it positive. It, it shouldn't be all... Uh, it shouldn't be that whenever the context of religion comes up, it's a nag. It's a constant nag. There's no strategy. There's no. There's no sense of okay. How how, how do I, you know, how how can I how can I get through to them in a way that doesn't involve telling them off and having a go at them and so on and so forth. And all too often, we all do it. I do it. You know, it happens in every household. All too often, um, you know, we're trying all these different things for. To get them motivated at school and to get them to, to get them the, the, the to get them the best chances and the best opportunities um, when it comes to their school and their GCSEs and so on. And we're thinking way ahead, way in advance, right? You know, people who want their who want their child to go to grammar school are already thinking about it when the child is six, seven years old, right? Or when that child is ten years old, you know, you're you're expected to make them pray. <laughs> and when that child is 12, 13, 14, somewhere in that age, <laughs> Salah becomes obligatory on that child. All right? What preparation are we taking for that? 
So the experience of children of religious occasions is extremely important. Everybody think about it. I mean, whether it's your children or your grandchildren or whoever, you know, your younger siblings, right? What is their experience like? So one is, it needs to be, everything needs to be bigged up. Uh, and two, it needs to be, the, their experience of it needs to be, needs to be positive. If it's negative, it stays, it stays with them, right? It stays with them. Um, you know, if, 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 for example, if, if getting them to pray was a forced affair, right? And we're forcing them to the masjid perhaps at a time when they're not ready for it. Not, you know, not, cre not sort of, not, not, no, not manipulation, but you know what, we, we do that with children all the time, right? Not coming up with strategies, right, to get them interested, right? Not, in, not incentivizing it, and, and so on. Um, then, uh, inevitably, their experience of it is going to be, it's going to be a negative one, and that's going to have a, a psychological impact on, on, on their religiosity, or on their attraction towards deen, and towards, towards deen, deen dad, <laughs> religion, as well as to religiosity. Right? Children sometimes grow up with a really negative attitude towards religious people. Yeah? And sometimes it's as simple as um, the, the religious guy is always the bad guy who's going to come and tell you off. Yeah? You know, uh, Uncle So-and-so who's like really strict and really religious. He's always the one that mum's going to call. You know? <laughs> when you misbehave or like your madrasa teacher is the one that's going to get called you know, I want to tell back in the day I want to tell Huzur you know like I'm going to tell your teacher that you're misbehaving and everybody's scared of the teacher because the teacher's going to right use the stick do you understand and it was such a negative uh, experience right constantly being told off and etc and, uh, and so on and so so this this is really the main the main thrust of of my reflection today. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has commanded us save yourselves and save your families from the hellfire, right? And He told us, "Udru ila sabili Rabbika bil hikma wal maridat al hasana." Call towards the path of your Lord with wisdom and with with good maridat al hasana with good counsel, right? So well, why 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 wouldn't why wouldn't that same command and that same principle apply to the way you call your children to the deen? Right? The way we call our families to the deen, the way a husband brings his wife to the deen, the way a wife brings her husband to the deen, uh, the way the way we bring our relatives to the deen, and so on. And one person who's committed to doing that, not only are they able to to bring their children onto the deen, but they have an impact on their whole tribe, right? Their whole extended family, their brother's family, their sister's family, and so on, because because they're committed to finding ways to 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 make it clear that this is the way you know like if you if you have a, a family built on dean then you get the best children right your children they tend to abide by you the most you have the most loyal children you have the most uh, you know the you, you have children who serve their parents the most and the longest and so on you have the most healthy families you have the most united families and so on so these these are all examples that we that people who are connected to the deen need to create almost as a responsibility because it's like we let the deen down do you understand when when our affairs fall apart because of our bad decisions because of our harshnesses and so on and so forth right so uh i mean how many times have we come across the example right of people who are wonderful characters in the working place you know men women at work they're lovely you know, and all their work colleagues have really, really wonderful things to say about how pleasant they are, how patient they are, and how they've got time for everyone, and how they never lose their temper, and they're so good, etc., etc. Come home, and that character, that person is missing, right? That person only exists at work, doesn't exist at home. Um, and therefore, at home, you know, it's like everything is ordering about when everything is a quick you know a snappy go at oh why haven't you prayed your salah yet and etc etc whereas all the wonderful strategies to get you get to get subordinates and employees and teammates to kind of work and everything all of that stuff it's all reserved for the workplace where at the end of it we've got money so we care about performing performance right when it comes to when when when, when there's a financial incentive 
But when it comes to the incentive of our children's deen and our children being attracted to the deen and our akhirah and earning reward, all of the patience and all of the forbearance and all of that stuff goes out of the window. It's like our families get the worst version of us, right? And strangers at work and other places get the best version of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly, not in one place, we read it today actually, interestingly enough sometimes, I speak about it and something comes up from the from what we read today. So wa'budullaha wa la tushriku bihi shay'a wa bil walidayn ihsanan. Right, worship Allah, don't associate partners with him and be be behave with excellence with ihsan. Behave with excellence towards your parents. Wa bidil qurba and your relatives. Right? Parents, relatives, i.e. family, relatives wal yatama wal masakini wal jari bil qurba and orphans and poor and the poor and so on. Meaning all of the, think about it. If look out there in culture and in society, all of the people that people tend to be harsh to, all of the people that people tend to find it easy to lose their temper at because they know there's going to be no repercussion. There's no back home. I remember you know spending a year in my early adulthood, right, as a nineteen twenty, as a nineteen year old, uh, a year that I was studying, and you know what you always saw was people. Anybody that had any semblance of money and power, everybody sucked up to them. Everybody was lovely to them and wonderful to them. And anybody that was obviously downtrodden, obviously weak, obviously poor, people treated them like trash, right? Back home, it was always the rickshaw drivers. Well, in, my, in, in that year, rickshaw drivers, you know, they earned peanuts, etc. They got this menial job and so on. People looked down. Never, people, people physically beat them up. People physically beat them up, right? Um, you know, somebody who has no family, classically the orphan, right? The orphan has nobody to look out for, for, for him or her and so on, right? People tend to be, people tend to be harsh to them and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran warns us about, no, the people who we take for <laughs> granted, so our, our parents, we take for granted, our families, we take for granted, our relatives, we take for granted, and people who we people who we consider weak and therefore take advantage of the quran continuously in fact in today's recitation we're continuously warned right about these people right about orphans and the rights of all orphans and, and never taking advantage of them right about about uh, relatives and being good to them do you understand about being good to strangers why because you can't make up if you if you're bad to a strange person Somebody you don't know, somebody you met on the train, on the bus, and so on, or a customer, um, and you're bad to them, you're rude to them. Um, when are you going to say sorry? Never say sorry to that person. That means if, you, if you've offended that person, then your toba for that sin, it's a major sin, by the way, when you cause offense to someone, swear at someone, it's a major sin. Let's, let's first establish that. Now you've got to make toba, right? Allah, please forgive me, you know, and you regret it. All of the conditions of Tawbah are there. But there's one more. When you cause harm to another person, the f there's a fourth condition of Tawbah. And that fourth condition is that you have to seek forgiveness from that person. How are you going to do that if it's a stranger? Right? So all of the places where we tend to take things for granted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us and says, no, here you're supposed to have the greatest of excellence. Right? That's where you're supposed to have uh, have excellence. You know, it's like your family have the... You're a nice person. Will your family have the greatest right to that personality? Right? And if there's anything negative to your personality, then your family have the greatest right to be protected from the negative aspect of, uh, of your personality. So, so, you know, our families come first in many respects and every time we experience something in our lives that is great and magnificent and amazing and important and you know and so on we have to always ask ourselves okay what's the experience like for my family okay inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to protect our children from the hellfire and raise them inshallah as people who will be great legacies for us in the akhirah Thank you.